I'm just gonna start by like looking through the um, KOD any percent and then I'm gonna uh, talk about it I guess is what is a good way to look at that because there's a lot going on in KOD that like should be covered somewhere and we have talked about making a tutorial for so long now that I'm just not it's, it's just not gonna happen so I'm just gonna do the, do it like this and talk about it and we can if you guys have any questions or additions then do them in chat and then I'll add some visuals if I need them and upload it to YouTube afterwards so we can just start at the start here so the first 10 seconds uh, there's a few things to mention here um Ah, uh, actually, I don't want to listen to myself. Um, so, like, yeah, no, 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 no. You start by doing these blinks, right? It looks pretty simple, but I, I, as you can see from the attempts, like, I, I mess it up constantly. So the first blink here is really important for how fast you can get it. Uh, the first blink, like, just matters so much. So you want to turn around and just blink onto the chain, right? Just blink onto approximately here. You can go like as low as there or as high as there and it's fine. Oh, it's on top of it. Yeah, yeah, smart. Let's move it there then. Just have it like whatever. Uh. That's a good place to have a chat. Sure. Good idea, Zets. Uh, so yeah, once you're onto the cart though, it's just blink in a straight line. Um, aiming higher here than you think you should usually means it works and you don't get a climb up. If you like aim to go right over it, uh, you often get the climb up anyway, which I, I don't know why, but it just happens. So here I got a I got a 9.1 as my entry here. You can get it as low as an 8.8. .8. So you start by just buying full mana potions. We end this with 1,200. You have a little bit extra money in this entire run. So like if you buy an extra bolt by accident, it doesn't really matter um, that much. Because like you have 1,200 here, and then for the next mission you need a thousand. And then after that, you only need 400, so you have like 100 extra. So you can buy some extra stuff by accident, and it's fine. Then, afterwards, we upgrade agility in the air here. Just because opening the menu in the air means that it's easier to not lose momentum. And then after that, you just slash your sword and do swordless right away. Um, I'll link to the swordless tutorial that um alone made in the description here so that people can see that oh yeah 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 actually i should cover that too so during this section you can see the inputs in the bottom left here but yeah um after this loading screen you can move a little bit so what i do here is that i move forwards because it allows us to do a little bit of move movement so you can blink right away after the shop. You don't blink before the shop, you're, you actually just can't um, for this specific one. You can do it for um, Timsh and Surge, which we'll get to. But right here, you, you just bring out blink so that it is ready to be brought out by just spamming right click and you move forwards. So then in the shop, you buy potions and then you do just do the blink that you set up. Then right here you do, yeah, the shopping and then you know the upgrading of agility, then swordless, then these blinks. Getting on top of this, if you do that with like the climb up uh, blink, like, did it not give me the animation? Okay, yeah, you can see I do like the climb up blink here. If you do that and then just delay your jump slightly while moving forwards, you get enough forwards momentum so that if you aim slightly right for that blink I just did, you end up on the roof right away. Then for this double blink, 
the setup is just um, I line it up so that when I'm like landing, there's a little bit of a gap on the roof you're standing. And so that when I'm landing after this small gap, you can see along here, I'm looking so that my camera is about the height of that, but like inside of it. That sets up so if you do a full double jump, you get the um, uh, damage cancel. Then you pick up the rune and then you slip flip. For some reason, my mouse has been fucking up, so that's why I jumped once I'm like in here. It's annoying, but like it's just a time loss. So you just want to do a slip flip to get through. Then you want to stand on that metal thing or those, doesn't really matter. The metal thing is slightly higher, so it's slightly easier. Then you move up here and then you open the door by pulling this lever. This level lever works the same as um, the wrong warp in Golden Cat in the main game. So that if you spam on the last input here after you've activated it, it can activate multiple times, meaning that when you exit, uh, it will bring up this menu again. So spam the input when you're going towards the door, but only press the input uh, in the menu once. Then once you're inside here, you just want to turn around and blink. I know that a lot of people like to move for this because they find it easier to play around with it. For some reason, I find it easier to just turn around while standing still and double jumping and then just blinking to that position. Depending on your exact positioning here and how close you are to the ledge like under us here, turning around after having um, already double jumped might mean that you can get above the rune without getting a climb up animation which just saves a little bit of time so you can see here that i just turn around do the jump uh like that you can jump a little bit lower which makes it harder to pick it up but then you will get um the rune without the jump without the climb up more consistently but you will pick up the rune less consistently if that makes sense Halen. Yeah, you're in the vid. Uh, why? This part kind of is really hard to do perfectly. You just want to turn around here, do this blink. Then here, I don't really have a lineup for it. You just kind of blink above there and you end up landing on that. And like, it works out to the point where you don't really have any um, issues getting a not hard fall basically every time. Just kind of like that. Then blink onto this. Then if you just aim as high as you can without hitting your blink on this, you will get a damage cancel. Then if you do a short, like the shortest jump you can without jump here while aiming straight forwards, this damage cancels and brings you straight to the rune. Then you just want to blink back up and blink over here. Then we shoot this dart, which slows down the game. So during that slowdown, we just upgrade agility too, which uh, just means that the slowdown happens while the menu is open. And therefore, we don't lose as much time from upgrading agility, and we like we combine two time losses to make them uh, less of a loss. Then you just want to blink over here and do a slip flip out of bounds on top of this pipe, and then clip back in here. That section is really hard to get down that smoothly, but just practice it, and it you'll get it eventually. Um, then you want to pull this lever three times, and on the last time, right afterwards, there's uh, an ass. That ass that we you just saw in the bottom left does not save any time. It's exactly as fast as just doing it normally, but it's easier to time the ass than it is to time the input about a second later uh, to do it without the ass. So I just always do it. Then here uh, in that menu, you want to choose the middle option, which is leave Rothwell in the chair. Game's in German, so it doesn't say that, but whatever. Uh, just because that's the fastest option. Uh, try the other ones and you'll see that that's just the fastest way to leave that menu. Then turn around, pick up this arc mine. Don't pick up this potion. We don't need it. Picking up this potion is slow. It's pretty funny. Oh yeah, and language just makes no difference. Alone is completely right. That, it makes no difference. Then I want you want to blink out uh, after picking up the arc mine. Just go out the window, then blink over here. Then do swordless. Blink towards the door. Um, so you want to end this, uh, like to have the optimal mana route, you want to end this section with no mana. So like if you were a little bit slow, if you see 
that you have like more mana or less mana, you can decide to do that last blink to the door or not. Then outside here, we have a kind of new strat, which I'll explain in some depth. Just blink all the way up here. And then right here, if you stand at the very top of this roof, do the lowest possible jump you can with full forwards momentum. Uh, you will get the damage cancel here. The reason why we do this, like shoot the wall, is that uh, Billy Lurk is supposed to be right there. Um, and right now she is, but she can sometimes be out of bounds because um, we're so fast. The game just doesn't like that. And to stop her from getting stuck out of bounds, which happens if you activate a trigger that is down here uh, while the um, overseers there are playing music, we shoot this dart which alerts the overseers, confuses them, and makes them stop playing music for a second because he turns around. And then we hit the trigger while he's um, turning around so that he's not playing it. For other categories, you want to do this very differently because you might need to get closer or whatever. But right here, we just need it to be right as we hit the trigger that he's not playing. So this is the fastest way to do that. Just shoot a normal bolt there. And you have plenty of those, so you don't need to... Um... um worry about like running out of those just make sure you use a normal one and not a sleep dart and you should be fine and for this section afterwards we have to wait for billy to blink uh first there then onto that then onto that and then onto the roof right behind me here so for this last section i don't do swordless because by the time i get over here you see i have to wait for like a very very short second once i'm up there before i double jump to get to billy because she only, uh, she goes on a timer to get over here. So then you just want to wait out this cutscene. Then there's one more input to just say, yeah, I want to leave. And then it's on to the next part. Lowest I've seen of this is a 204. You can do that part uh, a bit faster. I lost time indoors there and by doing the uh, slip clip double jump thing at the start which was kind of annoying because it was my mouse but not me but whatever it just happens sometimes it to be like that so at the start here uh, if you spam left click to do um, to, for, okay the, it's kind of precise you can blink before the shop happens to set that up consistently First, you want to spam enter to go through this as quickly as possible. Then you want to spam left click to go through the loading screen and the cutscene that starts right here as quickly as possible. Then as soon as you're done with both of those, you want to spam right click to do the blink as quickly as possible. If you do the blink slightly later, or if you get slightly unlucky with how the game loads you in, you won't blink to the correct location, meaning that you'll just blink into a wall and waste the blink, which kind of sucks. So the most consistent way I found to do that is just the spam the inputs like I just said. You want to do um, spam enter, left click, then right click. Then again, fill up on mana potions. Get 10. Uh, this is the most annoying mistake I made in this uh, recce. I bought 9 potions, which just isn't enough to finish this mission. And then I had to cancel that by the 10th, then press mission start, which is like a three quarters of a second that were just dumb. But yeah, so after the shop closes, you can see that I'm over here. Whereas if I didn't blink, I would be way further back. So you can quite clearly see uh, just by testing it a little bit uh, if you got the blink or not. And the blink regens while you're in the shop, like it refills your entire mana. So that blink is just free. You want to blink out here, preferably don't get stuck on Billy. Um, if I had blinked like slightly higher and towards the right, I would have blinked straight out here. So you just want to um, do that, just a little bit better than I did. This wall that you can see here, this sloped wall, really sucks. It has a lot of weird detection, which is why I do this blink route like around here instead of just blinking straight up here. Because, like, you can't blink past uh, quite a few points right here. So instead, we blink on top of the roof and continue over this way. Um, so, yeah, you want to... If you just blink constantly, you will get to 
this blink right here in a way that you can do a climb up blink onto that. Then just turn around, look up, blink so you get a climb up blink onto that. And then it's on to, um, I'm just explaining it in general to put it on YouTube afterwards. And it, it's a, like a live tutorial because I'm, I can't be bothered making a full one. Also, hey, crow. So for this blink, um, from the top of this thing, to get a damage cancel here, it's a little bit weird. There's like a few things that can fuck it up for you. So you see that like right behind here, there's a chair. If you go over there, if you land on that chair, it doesn't do the um, uh, damage cancel correctly. The way I have lined this up, I don't really know how to line it up properly. I just go off of the like to this part of the roof ish in height. Then I blink so that I'm bl blinking towards that uh, white line right there. Uh, after doing a full double jump with Dowd. And I haven't mentioned that, uh, like, specifically, but Dowd has a lot of different jump heights he can do. Uh, all of the strats in any percent that require you to do jumps, except for the one uh, right after going indoors in Rothwild, uh, require either full or, a meet, like, full or smallest jump. So this one is one of the ones where you just gotta jump, double jump as much as you can, like, as high as you can. That will land you there. Then you can just blink right away and blink on top of here. Then since the game is weird and you don't have a key bind for the slot that the arc mine is in, you got to use the weapon wheel to bring up the arc mine here. That's the arc mine we picked up uh, in the last mission. Then you turn around and use your last sleep dart on that hatter. And the arc mine will take care of the guys right here and over here. So just shoot that guy, doesn't matter where because it's a sleep dart. Then once you're inside here, you want to do swordless. Uh, you want to pick up the grenade from that launcher. And also if you can pick up those uh, sleep darts, it doesn't really matter because you can buy more, but it makes the shopping section next time slight in the next mission slightly faster if you can get it for free by just hovering your mouse over while scrolling to pick up items. I also just want to mention the grenade trap, right, as we enter this window. Um, like with this tripwire right here. If you activate that tripwire and then don't block the grenade, that grenade will be flung out of the window and go like behind where I, I am currently located and hit Talia, giving you a mission failure. So make sure that if you activate that tripwire, like I do here, that the grenade hits you. So you see the grenade bounced off of me, meaning I took damage and the grenade landed right there. You can either not activate the trap or activate it and block it. But if you don't block it, she will die. Game over, huge time loss. Um, so yeah, you see, I picked up just the grenade. You could also pick up the darts. Just blink out here and blink into this area. Uh, the guy that's standing in there, we call him Richard. This is Richard. We call him that because he's a dick. And uh, that is exemplified quite well in the world record. Because uh, uh, he blocked me here from getting around the door. Uh, you want to pick up that key, by the way, because we need it uh, to go through to the next area. So you just... Richard right there can sometimes also hit you or shoot you. Uh, and just mess up this entire indoor section. He, he is terrible we don't like him at all um but this clip right here is also like the main reason why he's annoying feel free to just shoot him in the head with a dart uh when you're like learning this because it's it will just save you time to not have to mess with his bullshit uh this clip is very weird it doesn't function like any of the other slip clips we really have in the uh, in the game uh the way we want to clip out of here is through this wall which for some reason doesn't have any detection on the side of it outside. So you basically just wanna lean all the way through the wall and then blink, kind of like you can do in uh, Golden Cat Out of Bounds, but not really. The way I line this up is that I do like a climb up prompt um, to get on top of this um, like cupboard thing.
Yeah, I, I, you get over here. I, I just get on top of it. Make sure I'm looking like slightly, to, slightly, slightly towards the right so I don't get stuck on the wall. Then I just lean uh, to the right and move into the wall. And you can see that like there, there's nothing stopping us from blinking once we're inside of it. So there's no like wall here to stop us from getting like the other side. It's just the inside part. So you just got to get far enough out, then blink. That clip can be very uh, annoying. If you don't like want to do that right away, it's also fine right here to just go back throughout this door to the balcony and blink out. So you just want to get up there, blink out, and then blink to this door. This is the door we needed a key for. Uh, so if you didn't pick up the key, then this door will be locked. You'll know if you made that mistake. Uh, this door is also the same as the one entering Rothwild where you can get like a wrong warp. So again, spam it as much as you want when you're going towards it. But the actual menu prompt, only press that once. And the blinks here are kind of like, they don't really matter. Just make sure you're blinking the, as quickly as possible. Because this last blink, you'll have to wait for the door to open before you can blink again. Um, so like you just do it, um, uh, so you get ish over here and can open the door by blinking constantly and it's all fine. Cause you see like I'm pushed up against the door, so I have to wait a little bit. Then while I'm pushed up against the door, I bring out my sword cause we want to stab Roth, uh, stab Timch. Uh, the way we skip getting this like, um, kill animation on him is by doing a, a short hop without getting spotted and then stabbing him so like the shortest double shortest jump you can do you can see he hasn't actually uh detected us yet which means that he will die in one hit so we just stab him um while in the air and we don't get the animation then you need to pick up his pouch which contains the key for his safe this is a good time to mention tim G. Um, uh, the man that's standing right in front of me at the bottom of these stairs isn't always there. Uh, he has a, as we're not quite sure about this, but pretty sure he has a one in three chance of being at the bottom of the stairs. And for any percent, you basically want to reset for this, for him being at the bottom of the stairs. Cause it's so much slower if he isn't, but it's fine. Also, if he's on the third floor, I'll add like a graphic for YouTube here about like all the different RNGs. Like a, some kind of table with everything. But like, if he is on the first floor, then his will is on the third floor and vice versa. So if he's on the third floor, then the will is on the first floor. And you need to both first murder him, then go get the will. Which is why it's fastest for him to be on the first floor, because then it's like, you just start by going indoors, then you move upwards, and then you leave through an exit that is up there. Um, for other categories, these mat this matters in different ways for any percent, just like if he's on the first floor, perfect. If he's on the third floor, kind of good. And if he's on the fourth floor, that's, there's no reason why you should continue that unless it's in a race. Cause if he is on the fourth floor, the top floor of the building, then his will can be either on the first floor or third floor, which just means that you, A, he is so far up that you got to move to him first and then move back down, which is annoying. Um, and B, it's like, it's not even consistent where the will is. So you have to go look for it in two different spots. So it's really slow. Even if it is a race, it's probably just faster to reset. Yeah. It's like, it's such an annoying, um, part of the run, honestly, but it's like, if he's fourth floor, just, just give up, just reset. So we kill him. Uh, if he is third floor, he'll be standing right here in the middle of this room, by the way. Um, so you just blink back down and get the will from a safe that is... Let's point it out. So like if he is third floor, then his will is in like the room over there in a chest there. But since this is world record, I of course got the good RNG. I pick up the will there. I also pick up that like hundred uh, coins that's in the safe. 
you don't actually need it, but it does mean you can get an extra mana potion, which is very useful to just have for a surge in case you miss anything. Then afterwards, since we haven't picked up a key here, we just got to slip clip through this first door, which is locked. Then you clip through this. It's pretty annoying. This clip, you just got to kind of jam your head into the corner. You don't have to move for this. You just jam your head into the corner and look around until you can see that the blink icon is on the other side. And then you just blink. So then I have to pick up the key that is by the door here because this door is locked. Um, so I pick up that key. And then go through. Then as soon as you're through this, you just want to blink right away. Then run over here. And if you like aim for the top of the sign and blink, you can see that I like get, kind of get bonk like on the first part. You can also just run through it then, which I didn't do quite optimally here. So I didn't get enough forward momentum, but there is a way to just hit the sign, then keep running over there, which makes it a little bit faster. Honestly, like Timsh is the, by far the worst part of the run in terms of execution here. Uh, I did a lot of things kind of poorly, so you can definitely save a few seconds extra here. But yeah, then talk to Talia. She does three prompts and then you turn around. I like to jump, blink, and swing here because it's a straight line and I get to do swordless while in the air so I don't have to think about anything else. But I know a lot of people like instead to like um, go around the dumpster right here. Just like turn around, run around it, and blink so you're over there instead. So then right here, again, another one of those blinks that I don't really have an exact lineup for. I just kind of know how to do it. Uh, but you want to blink basically while you're, when you're at the, um, like standing ish there, like by this wall, then you want to blink just about the height of that light pole that will get you on top of some boxes. I don't even show them off at all in this clip. There's some boxes there that if you stand on them, you can blink, like double jump off of to get up here. Um, if you don't want to do any of that uh, last part there, uh, in that way, you can also, at the start of the split, instead of blinking over, you can like remove the whale oil tank that's behind this thing. That's like over over there, if you remove that whale tank, it can just go through the wall of light both ways, which is a lot easier, but it's like a little bit slower. I think it's like a second and a half slower. Oh, for any percent, yeah, I got recce. Um, but yeah, for the blink off of that, you just wanna aim for the top of the roof like we did on the other side to get a climb up prompt. Then if you aim for the top of this sign right there, you'll get a damage cancel down. And you blink over here. Then if you do a short hop. Um, if you do a short hop right here. Like the shortest you can go while looking straight forwards. So you'll damage cancel down here. As long as you don't end up on this railing by going too far left. Then you blink there. You blink there. And you're out of mana. So then it's just a cutscene. Then it's exactly the same thing as at the start of Timsh, where you want to spam enter to get through that, spam left click to get through this and the cutscene, and then right click to do a blink before the shop opens. Then here is the first time you want to buy something else than mana potions. You want to buy, so you have full of uh, sleep darts, and then the rest of your money is spent on mana potions. You don't actually need to be full on them. You just need six, I'm pretty sure. But having 10 is just very safe because it's so easy to miss a dart. Um, so I think I get five. Oh, I get five potions here. You only need three. So having five is plenty. But again, money isn't very tight in this route. Then for this section, um, if you didn't get the grenade from the grenade launcher in the middle of Timsh, there's a grenade you can pick up right there and on that shelf instead. 
slightly slower, but not by very much at all. Uh, so if you did uh, not pick that up, you want to pick up this uh, incendiary first, then pick up the grenade and leave. But since I got the grenade in the last mission, I just need those incendiaries that you can see right there. You pick up those incendiaries, turn around and get on this chain. This chain is an asshole. It's like, it's, it's, it's not fun at all. Because for some reason, it will just kind of crumple sometimes. And like, screw you from getting your double jump when you're getting off it. It seems to have to do with you moving into the chain, which makes it swing. And then if you're like turning your camera around as you're jumping off it. So you, you can see right here that I'm not turning my camera around. I'm just jumping in a straight line and then turning around once I'm off the chain. Um, so like, I just go in a straight line forwards and then turn around afterwards. Uh, right now we're looking through a video of the game. But um, I've played the game so many times before that like it doesn't really matter to me what language it, it, it is in. I don't even know German. But yeah, pick up those incendiary bolts because we need them for this mission. Then you want to get up here and blink up to this. Shoot that guy with a sleep dart. Blink over here. Shoot uh, Hume with an incendiary dart. If you shoot him before any of those guys have spotted you, it will take out both of them. And you need to take out both of them. Then after you shoot them, you shoot this guy with a sleep dart in the leg. Here I should mention that you want to have um, auto aim on in game. Uh, cause it's so much easier to hit darts if you do. Uh, I think it's under controls. Yeah. Uh, you want to have auto aim on and auto aim strength to on 100. Aim assist, I have off. I don't actually know what it does. Uh, but, uh, you definitely want auto aim on for the surge mission. Or what, by We've had runners that have ran this for ages without knowing that. And they just lose time for no reason. Because they make the game harder for themselves. Um, so yeah, sleep dart, incendiary dart, sleep dart. Then turn around and pick up this pouch. It's like a mission item. You just need it. Uh, you don't actually have to do anything with it. But you do that. You do need it. Um, then blink once. Then swordless. Then blink again, then blink down here, sleep dart, turn around, get over here, swordless, blink on top of this. Just blink over this so you can land on the thing in the middle. Then incendiary down here. Uh, the video isn't very high resolution. Uh, I can actually just show that off. Yeah, so for the, for the sleep dart right here, or no, incendiary dart, you can see that like, if you aim there, it will kill a guy that was standing behind here. So you just need to kill him uh, with this dart right here and then move on. Then this grenade takes out both a um, music box overseer and one of your assassins. Because part of the mission here is to save four of your assassins from the overseers before you can uh, finish the mission. But the assassins can die. So if you just murder one of the assassin, the game says, well, shit, you can't, you can't save all of them. Uh, so it just fails that objective and we're good. So this grenade takes out um, both an overseer and an assassin, um, meaning that it takes out one of the overseers, which we need to do. We need to take out all of the music box overseers and it takes out the one assassin to fail that objective. If you just stand here-ish and throw it like in the middle of uh, those two signs, it will like go down here, explode, and like usually take out that guy and the assassin over there. So there it freed an assassin, but it didn't take out the overseer. Yeah. So if you just stand here, throw it like that, then it should take out both of them. Yep. So there it took out that guy. And it took out the assassin over there. Um, meaning that you got everything you needed there. In order to do that, after you throw the grenade, you need to run like about in here. So that those guys spawn. Because there's a trigger like here-ish that makes them spawn. So you can see that like I throw the grenade, then I run forwards. Meaning that those guys spawn. Then you blink over to this area. And you sleep dart that music box over here. 
The location of the overseers in here is RNG. The, the guy can be standing all the way over there, can, he can be standing on the stairs, or he can be nice and stand like behind here. The reason why that is nice is that while the overseer hasn't spotted you in this area, he will not block you from blinking. And that's also why I lean to get around this corner to shoot him, so that I can shoot him with a sleep dart and then blink right away afterwards. Because if you if he spots you before that, like if he spots you before he um before you shoot him, it takes a little bit of time for him to uh, go to sleep, and you can't blink during that. Then, after that, you just want to read this map. Again, just part of the mission. And then shoot this last overseer. This overseer, we call him Timmy, because he is such a fucking Timmy. He's just a little kid that likes to hide in the worst locations, and he's great at hide and seek. So right here, again, since this is world record, this was a pretty good Timmy. But he can be standing behind here, he can be standing over there, he can be like under the floor here, he can move around a lot, and it's pure RNG where he is, uh, but you just need to take him out and then blink up there, and then you're basically done. Uh, during this dialogue you want to take the second option. The first option is to kill all of the overseers, the second one is to spare them. Sparing them is just faster. So you, if you just got to do press down and F and you're good in that option. Then you move backwards and right while turning around here and jumping so that you can blink down there as quickly as possible. And now there's a few more inputs and the DLC is done. So if you press F during this part of the dialogue, the second like subtitle area, press F during that. Then it sets up an ass for the first here, for the first dialogue prompt. Won't explain what an ass is. Check my general any percent guide. So it sets up an ass for this. And then you got to do another prompt and then press F and you're done. And that's um, knife and done wall. Like in terms of analysis, my surge here for um. For the split is really good. It is like pretty ridiculously good. There's a few mistakes, but like it's very hard to beat. My Timsh is not that great. That can definitely be beaten by like three or four seconds, uh, at least. And the Rothwild can be beaten by at least two seconds, maybe three, but that's much much harder. So I imagine this. Uh, world record right now with current strats could go as low as like a 510 realistically 57 theoretically uh but i you'd have to grind for that a little bit to get it so we'll see what happens with it so yeah that's that's kod any percent 